Today we're demoing how you can take a set of architectural plans like this. In this case, it's a residential project. Simply trace around the outside of the building and put in some internal walls. And through a simple online platform, you can automatically frame this building and have all that framing sized. And you can print out a structural report with that framing depth and what makes up that depth and what volumes of material are used. And you get sections through both ways. And you can see how the different members relate to each other. You can also get engineering drawings from that plan. And all this can be done online prior to having an engineer engaged even so that you can get a quick idea of what framing you might expect if you know some of the parameters. And you can possibly change your design to suit the framing better or you can use it as a discussion point with your engineer uh, or try different options quickly. So starting with this set of architectural drawings, this is the PDF. This is by a local company called Urban Farm and House, and there will be a link to their website below in the description. The first thing we need to do is to get these lines into a DXF. So this can be simply done in most CAD programs. I'm using Rhino here, but you could use AutoCAD. And you could either just import the PDF as long as you've got it to scale. Um, or you could get the CADs. And all you're trying to do is create an outline of the building. So you can see all this information about doors and all that sort of stuff you don't need. You just literally need the very outline of the building. And I've also included some internal walls, which optionally can be used to place columns. So the outline is the important thing. Optionally, internal walls. I've also got a void in there for the staircase. So the outline should be all joined up, preferably, and the walls can be just lines. And all we need to do is export that line work, just simple line work, all on one layer export it to a DXF. So again, you don't have to use Rhino for this, you could use AutoCAD, obviously. Um, most programs, most CAD programs have DXF, if not all. So that's easy, just export that out to a file. Okay, so now we're gonna go to structcompare.com and it looks like this by default. To start off with, we want to get our outline in. There's only two buttons to start off with, so use my outline. Upload the CAD file, which is a DXF. That's my file that I've just made. We just wait for that to load, and there it is. It's saying outline ready to design. Then you just say design wait for it to do all its framing and calculations to size up all the beams. And it's coming through now. So there it is. So it's giving you a structural plan with all the framing that you need for that outline of that building. You can see that uh, it's got, it's telling you how deep things are. So it needs 90 mil ply 
to span across the joist. Spacing, it's telling you the deepest member is 290. The total depth is 309, of which is a combination of the ply plus the deepest member. And your deflection zone is 19 mil, so you would typically expect the floor to deflect another 19 mil, which is normally not a problem. You've also got your material volumes, how much ply, how much framing, and the total. You've got your sections cut one way and the other way. So you can see where the deepest edge members, internal members, um, and how they relate in the different uh, nominal section directions. And you have some engineering drawings ready to download. You can get a report of this. If I say print design sheet, you can see, and I'll just turn that to portrait. You can see you've got your 3D image there of your building. You've got your basic information there in tables. On the next page, you've got your sections and your marks. And so what they what the marks represent. You've also got, if I cancel that, you can download a 3D CAD. So you can have this as a 3D CAD model. You've also got print engineering drawings. So you can get an engineering style drawing, which has all that information uh, on a plan. Now I'm sure you noticed that the loading we had selected here is residential floor non-tiled and it also tells you that in the report. But for this particular building, because it's a residential project, that whole floor is not um, all double story. So the lower part is popped up as a, as a second floor, uh, upper floor. And that lower, that upper section there is actually roof. So if I show you on the PDF, you can see that this is the first floor plan. So from that line there, that's the section of the building that is double story. And this section here is actually flat roof. So we can easily refine our design now because we could say that this front half of the building uh, doesn't need that much framing and it actually needs to be a flat roof. So to do that, all I've done is selected that part of the building only and created another DXF uh, and I'll just load that now. So as you can see, it's just literally that front half of the building. We go back to struct compare. I'm going to load that one in. And then I'm going to say I want flat roof. Now I'm going to design that option. So this should give me smaller framing because it's only flat roof loading which is less um, especially on the live load so as you can see i've still got a 309 depth now why is that you can see that that's being governed by the 290 here now i can change that um, and as you you can see it's snapped to some internal walls as well to put columns where possible. So to refine it a bit more, <clears throat> I'm going to go to the more options section, section. And in here you've got your max primary span, max secondary, and you've got your joist spacing and what uh, width the members are. So in Australia, 45 is the standard width of a piece of timber. 
So I know that I don't want that 290 because I think I can get the whole of this roof thinner. So how do I go about that? Well, the primary span is in this direction. So if I change that to five meters instead of six meters, and then say design this option, it's gonna say that's a long span, I need an extra column in there. And that's what it's done. But you'll notice the columns are in the wall anyway. So you could look at your arcs and say, um, that's fine, it's a wall, I can have a column there. You might uh, wanna rearrange the windows or um, or you could move these columns slightly as well, because remember, this is just preliminary. So but as you can see, because that span's now been reduced, been split into one, two, three sections instead of two, it's now saying we only need a, a two number 190 there. So you can see that the deepest primary edge is now a two number 190 and actually the overall depth of the whole structural roof has been reduced to 259 mil by changing that maximum span value only so obviously if you want to refine it even more you could reduce that even more um, and there's other things you can do with more options for example you could use glue lamp so Let's try GL21, which is a very strong timber, and see what that comes up with. Two fifty nine, so even less. Um, an even shallower depth, and. If you look carefully, it's being governed by this internal span here, uh, B2, which is 2240, um, which, sorry, is actually over here. So again, you could, um, if you could live with a common there, you could reduce that span again, or you could, um, because it's glue lamb, you could try another common width, which is 63. So you might find that that 240 reduces down. Let's see. Yes, it has. So it's now 210. So now we've got an overall depth of that roof structure of 229 mil. So just under 230 mil. If we use glue lamb 21 and 63 with um, timber so yeah so that's an example of some more refinement you can do um, with more detail thanks for watching this structured parametrics video leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one